Thanks for joining us here on Behind the Spotlight. I am Crystal Lampett. And if you are wondering how you could possibly blend mariachi music with a bit of rock and funk and soul, well, you're about to find out. Thanks to Maria the Mexican. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Okay, so we're going to kick it off with one of your songs. And is this an original as well? Original, yes. Que Tosigo, which yes. means? I'll Follow You. I'll Follow You by Maria the Mexican. I'll follow you. What is the song really about? Because it's for, for those of us who don't speak Spanish, you know, sure. we maybe don't totally understand what about. It's also a love song. Mm -hmm. um, just about about expressing kind of love for somebody that maybe you can't quite pin down, but it's there and it's present. And actually the backstory with this song was it was inspired by um, a church song mm -hmm. that I played with the mariachi, Mariachi Estrella, mm -hmm. um, with my grandmother and my mm -hmm. sister. And I played it, you know, with the Spanish lyrics, you know, church lyrics for Garrett Nordstrom, our guitar player, a few years ago when he just fell in love with it. And so oh. we kind of put the MTM flair on it again. We sped it up. Um, we wrote our own lyrics. And now it's Kate the Seagull. And so he fell in love with the song and also with you, obviously. He did, because yes. Because you guys are getting married. Yes, So we congratulations. Are. Thank you so much. Are you so excited? How, how crazy is excited. that to be like, you work together, you're, you know, obviously going to be married. I mean, is it, is it amazing and exciting? Is it crazy? It is. <laughs> it's amazing and exciting. Um, we have worked together for several years and it was an easy transition. And yeah, we're getting married this October. So, oh, 
this year. Yeah. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. Oh, I bet. I'm sure you'll, you'll be relieved when some of that planning is over and done with, too. Absolutely. <laughs> I hear it's, it's exciting, but can be also frustrating. So Absolutely. early congratulations Thank to you, Thank you so too. much. Very happy for you. All right, well, we will be right back with more on Maria the Mexican after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. So your name is Maria. The name of the band is Maria the Mexican, but is it the same Maria that the band was named after? No, actually, the band is sort of a tribute to my grandmother. Her name was Maria Teresa mm -hmm. Cuevas. Mm -hmm. um, my sister who plays with us as much as she can, she just had a little baby. Um, her name is Teresa. So it's kind of a play on that. It's a tribute to her and our experience, you know, growing up being in a mariachi band. But it's also just for all the Marias out there. It's a very common, you know, generic name, and it's just a representation of feeling connected to culture. Mm -hmm. I like it. And your grandma has really a cool story. She does. Um, so tell us a little bit about how she came to really inspire the band and who you guys are today. Well, my grandmother started one of the first all-female mariachi bands in the country. Mm -hmm. And they were quite popular around the Kansas City and Topeka area. But sadly, they were playing on um, at the Hyatt when the Skywalk collapsed. And, you know, they were playing for a party. Oh, my gosh. And wow. she was the only survivor of, that, of the band after that incident. Whoa. So she, oh you know, gosh. was certainly hurt and took time to recover, but when she did, she really wanted to preserve this tradition and, you know, this sort of cultural element. So she really wanted to teach this music to her grandchildren. So my sister and I started when we were about 11 years old, wow. um, you know, with cousins and family members, and we really had this band, um, this mariachi band, Mariachi Estrella, for about 10 years. What an amazing way to honor her too, you know, in her memory. And, Absolutely. Um, that's, that is amazing. So how, so you said you started with music at 11. How did that eventually progress? I mean, did you stick with it your whole life and then decide, I want to start a band? How did you come to be where you are now with Marie the Mexican? Sure. Well, because I've been doing it for so long, I can't imagine not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so we were in the mariachi band until I was in my early 20s, and at that time my grandmother was early 90s, so mm -hmm. she was kind of stepping back a bit, and my sister and I kind of started exploring other genres of music that we like to perform, and actually it was when I met Garrett Nordstrom that he kind of had this vision of this band, mm -hmm. of taking what we do with musical sounds of what he did, because he's been a longtime musician his uh -huh. whole life but he was more rock and roll, and he said, let's put them together, and here we are today. That's so crazy. How, I mean, how does that work? How, how did you come to combine two very distincti distinctive genres and make it flow the way it does? I mean, how, how has that developed over the years since you guys started the band? Well, it's certainly been a process, and if you listen to a 90-minute 90 sh 90 set, you will hear blues, you will hear mm -hmm. soul and funk and, you know, a traditional mariachi song on its own. So it's really this hybrid, this experience of contemporary music, but also this very traditional folk. And it's taken us a while to kind of put our finger on the sound we want to capture. But I think when you hear us, you see, you know, this is just an expression of, of people today getting together, kind of putting together all of their influences mm -hmm. and expressing themselves. It's kind of uniting everyone, mm -hmm. uniting it, exactly. those forces. Which, uh, you know, what does that mean to you to essentially be preserving mariachi in a way? Well, it was something that my grandmother wanted, so I feel sort of a, a responsibility to do it. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly, you know, mariachi bands all over the country but I love that we can make it our own and you know keep that going, but play blues and funk, yeah. and it's very important to us. Yeah, it keeps us going for sure. Absolutely. Has there been um, have there been any challenges with you know mariachi being sort of a, a unique genre, or do you find that because you have had enough of other musical influences that people respond to it really well? Well, I think. 
you know, it kind of depends on the listener. I think people um, sort of digest it differently. Maybe it's something they haven't seen or heard. And so a lot of times we just get a lot of really interested people. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, this is very different. What are you doing? Um, but, you know, good. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, what, what's going on? <laughs> but good feedback, I think, yeah. for me personally, just playing mariachi for so long, you know, trying to transition was hard for me to play other oh, music. Sure. And same with Garrett, yeah. because actually one of the first gigs we did, we, my sister and I asked him to play a four hour mariachi set <laughs> in Chicago at okay. this time, because my sister was living there briefly. And so we taught him four hours of mariachi music. And we think, oh, this is so super simple. Yeah. But he's like, oh. He's like, what is this? This is so hard. So it was kind of on both ends. You know, they have to interpret it, and then we have to interpret, you know, the contemporary music, and it's definitely been a well, little bit of a way. It's interesting because that sort of plays on your relationship as well. I mean, you've had to learn from him, and he's had to learn from you, and I'm sure that that, that, that coming together, it's really kind of a beautiful thing, and I'm sure, and that's like, what a lovely union. Yeah. Who's playing at your wedding? Are you? Everybody's <laughs> off. Everybody's off that night. Okay, good. So all the musicians and the band, several musicians that we play with around town, were like, "Take the night off. Let's let's put the playlist on the dance yeah. party." So we need to figure out a couple details, but okay. for the most part, we're just gonna relax. Good. Yeah. Well, when you do this for a living, I'm sure every now and then yeah. it's nice to just kind of like step away. Um, you did go to KU, right? I did. Yes. So and you studied um, communication mm -hmm. and Latin American studies. How did you move from that as a, a major and a, that being your central focus to music? And are you doing music full time now? I'm also a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. And I also do grant writing by day. Mm -hmm. So it's all, you know, it's all connected. I feel like yoga is very connected to music and expression and sort of opening up and sharing energy and sharing emotion. Um, that's yoga, that's music. Mm -hmm. um, communication. You know, I always, I've been on stage since I was 11, so I still get a little nervous, but oh, sure, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, with the communication studies major, you're doing a lot of public speaking, you oh. know, and you're learning to be upfront and to speak to people and it's, it's all, it's, yeah. it's very circular. It, so it fits well. It all kind of, yeah, they're all different sides of you, but mm -hmm. it makes sense, it sounds like. Do you feel like music kind of helps, you know, talking about yoga and music and how it is an expression, do you feel like it helps you be really present? Absolutely, absolutely. It's hard to be thinking about what you're going to eat or a meeting when you're singing a song and you're playing it, when you're practicing yoga, too. You might, mm -hmm. you don't want to fall out of a pose. And when you're teaching, you know, mm -hmm. you have to be there. Um, I still have to work on that every day. It's not easy, but doing the things I do certainly helps. Yeah, well, and that's an interesting thing because I think that's what a lot of people are striving for is just being more present in their lives. And so it's, you know, it's good to be able to choose a line of work where it kind of forces you to do that. Absolutely. And has it gotten easier with time? Do you feel like the more you play music, the more you are consistent with yoga, you've been able to remain present more consistently? Oh, I try. I mean. Depends on the, the situation, yeah. I'm sure. You know, m social media makes it hard. Media in general yeah. makes it hard. But with our modern day, it's like we need it more. Yeah. You know, we need it more. And it ebbs and it flows, but it helps. It yeah. absolutely helps. It's Some uh, days it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, uh, I can relate to that a lot. And I for sure agree with, with so much technology. It's almost like. How are, how are we more connected yet so disconnected exactly. because of technology? Mm -hmm. So that's, um, yeah. Um, all right, well, I do want to get into the four favorites. So first off, what's your favorite book? I guess I would have to say Bhagavad Gita. Just, oh. you know, this very yogic text. Mm -hmm. um, it just is something that is nice to revisit. And just as what we've said, be present. Yeah. Go back to the text, remind myself kind of what's important what's, yeah what's important what's yeah. the foundation here I love that yeah kind of a sacred text mm -hmm. um, okay and then your favorite movie oh I love the movie death becomes her oh my god that's one of my favorites too really yes that's old school that yeah. was was that the 80s or 90s with um 
Uh, Goldie Hawn. Goldie and, and Meryl. Yes. And Bruce Willis. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah, that's just one of the movies that's I can good. I forgot about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that I have not seen that. That's one of those movies that whenever it was on TV and I happened to pass through it, I'd just be like, oh, I'll watch this for the next hour. Like, I can be yeah, totally Yeah, exactly. Absurd. Like, sure. I love it. Um, yeah, I can't go wrong with Meryl Streep either, right? Um, okay, and then your favorite music artist? Santana, probably. Nice. Carlos. I mean, talk about somebody that has fused, you know, authentic folk sounds with rock and roll. I mean, classic rock. He was such a huge part of my childhood, and my dad would put his CD on when I was in elementary school to wake me up, and nice. it'll, he'll just always have a really special place in my heart. Huge musical influence on me and my sister. Yeah, that makes sense. He's another classic. I mean, he's, he's also pretty old school, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, and then last but not least, what has been sort of your favorite experience, your favorite story um, as a musician? Or well, as a band yeah, I'd probably have to take that back to just being in the mariachi with yeah. my sister. You know, such a young age and my grandmother and kind of having to negotiate and find out who I was. You know, we were oh. we were young young children, but on the weekends we put on a mariachi outfit. You know, mm -hmm. we, I played the viola, my sister played the violin, and we did this very Mexican thing, and we loved it, but we also, you know, went to school and had this whole other life. It was kind of like we had a, a secret life on the you side. Were like a Mexican we were, Hannah Montana. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, my grandmother, she was so great. She just encouraged us to shine, you know, no matter what, be who you are, don't be sorry, don't be afraid, and the first time I think I ever sang, it was, okay. You know, she kind of like had to give me yeah, a little push. Like swim. Yeah. yeah, like go on out there, and I'm so grateful for that. So there seem, it sounds like there's a lot of nostalgia. For sure. Attached to that. Was there, was there any moment that you thought, like, this is who I want to be? Do you remember a moment? You I, know? Think, I think that came later, mm -hmm. which, you know, looking back, I wish I would have kind of appreciated it more at the time. You know, we yeah. were teenagers, we were struggling. We were like, you know, we don't, we want to go to the parties. We don't want to yeah. do the gig. The gig was all, the gigs were always, you know, at the times when the high school parties oh, were. Oh yeah, you're like, I want to go hang out with boys. Yeah, and, yeah of course. But, <laughs> you know, when I kind of got a little bit older and especially when I met Garrett, I really was not only grateful for that, but I knew I wanted to make it more. And I felt like we had an opportunity to, you know, he introduced me to all these musicians. And from there, we've just, you know, we have a goal in mind and we're just doing it. So you made the right choice in the end. It, mm -hmm. it turned out to be good for you. All right, well, thank you so much. Well, all right, you. we'll be right back with more Behind the Spotlight. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. I'm here with Maria the Mexican, and we do have one final song for you. But before we get to that, I want to make sure you guys know where to find all of this amazing music. Where can we check out your music? You can check it out on MariaTheMexican.com and listen to both of our albums for free. We're also on iTunes, Spotify. We, of course, have a Facebook page, Twitter, Maria the Mexican, all the same. I love it. Okay, and this last song is Mexicans and Americans. Is it about Mexicans and Americans, I'm guessing? It is, certainly. It's about unity and coming together and just our experience as Mexican Americans. And just really in this time, we got to stick together. We got to fight through. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty timely topic right it now. It is, absolutely. All right. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, this is Mexicans and Americans by Maria the Mexican. Thank you.